I'm going to go over the five non 40k books you should read if you're into Warhammer 40k or if you're just in general into science fiction. These are modern science fiction stories that are up and coming authors, as well as stories that are very related to the themes that you'll find within 40k. So you'll have stories about the military. Um, warlords, you will have stories about terraforming and cosmic horror, and that is kind of the theme that I'm going with here. The first book I want to talk about is Children of Time by Adrian Tcharkovsky. You should recognize this name if you've been following Black Library in the last couple of years, because this was the author for Day of Ascension, the Gene Steeler Cults book released in 2022, just last year, not even a year ago at this point. But he is most well known for his other stories going from science fiction to fantasy and various other media projects that he has worked on. But Children of Time in particular is fantastic because it follows a terraforming project that has gone awry. A megalomaniacal scientist has decided that she wants to spread or spread intelligence throughout the universe to ensure that humanity is not alone, but doesn't want it just to be for humanity. She wants to uplift other sapiens, other apes, essentially, and ensure that they are intelligent enough to work with us so they have a different perspective on the world. A catastrophe arises on Earth, which causes it to collapse in our entire solar system, releasing a carrier wave virus that goes out throughout the entire galaxy and demolishes all technology that takes in this signal. The monkeys that were supposed to be sent down to this planet are unfortunately burned up in atmosphere, but the virus that was actually sent down to uplift them and create them, make them intelligent did not go away. It cannot target other mammals, so it picks out the most relevant species it can find to complete its natural task, which is to make intelligence. And it chooses every single insect that it can get itself into. Particularly in this book, it follows Portia spiders, jumping spiders, that are usually about the size of a dog as described in the book. But these spiders are the main viewpoint that you'll see besides some human viewpoints that are coming from a generational ship from the collapsed Earth. And this is a theme that follows through with a lot of his story, which is having empathy for your nightmares. Even though a lot of people have this innate fear of spiders, you will see from their perspective and you see the language that they evolve, either using thumping or using their palps in order to actually communicate between one another. And you see the societal structure between the two as well, the gender roles that are reversed comparatively to ours. And you follow through with thousands of years of this civilization growing up of spiders. And it is an absolutely fantastic story just from that perspective alone. But then you have other moments throughout the entire story that get into this deep existential dread of humanity as we are being honestly left behind. Great story. Honestly, read it. There are two books that are in the series afterwards that are really fantastic as well that go more in depth of other species that have been uplifted, not just spiders. The next book that I suggest you read is Shards of Earth by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Surprise, surprise. He just happens to be one of the best modern science fiction writers out there and has a phenomenal output of books that he writes. Uh, Shards of Earth in particular, I suggest you read because it is your classic space opera. You have a ragtag crew of scavengers that have stumbled upon a conspiracy that would potentiate a war between two major political factions, as well as major religions and trade routes and everything along those lines. It is great. A hundred years before the story started, though, is where we kick off with the starting of these creatures known as architects that would wander into solar systems go to the planets that have inhabitants on it, billions of people. And it started off with Earth, actually. They would go to the planet and using gravity would tear it apart and create beautiful artistic sculptures like those glass sculptures you see with glass blowing and would murder everyone that is on that planet. Humanity had divided itself into two different groups. There is the human united side, Hugh, and then there was also the Parthenon, cloned um, military women. Very French with some of the way that they act, but very stout women that would just were built to just fight. They united to fight against this foe, and eventually there was a stalemate brought together because of something called intermediaries. They were able to convene a peace or peace 
with the architects. Now, there is a conspiracy that could lead to Hugh and the Parthenon fighting one another again, but there is also the thought that the architects are back and are looking to again eliminate any sentient species living on planets. It is fantastic. You have a lot of those 40k aspects with you, uh, something called Unspace, which is very much like the warp. You have a eking sense of dread and normal people are just put into cryos, so that way they don't have any kind of interaction with Unspace. But then you have intermediaries who are there to navigate and have some connection into Unspace. It has various other species and not just humanity. There are the Kittering, which are crab-like creatures, which one of them is a part of the crew. And then you have the Essiel, who are a crab-like creatures, which are creating their own empire and deeming themselves gods. And they just get other species to join them and worship them as gods. They have some weird things that go on there. But again, it fits in with a lot of the themes that Tchaikovsky does, which is empathy for the outsider, empathy for those that are misaligned or those that are not a part of you, essentially. Fantastic book. It, again, it has more stories that are coming along with it right now. So there is Shards of Earth, then there is Eyes of the Void, I believe is the name of the second book. And then the third book is going to be coming out later this year, I believe in March or May. I already have it pre-ordered on Audible. So there's that. Now, before I go any further, I because I just mentioned it, uh, Audible. You should absolutely read all of the books that I am mentioning today on Audible. Just because Audible is, I find one of the easiest ways just to digest as many books as I have. I think I have about 48 or more. I just have a lot of books. That's how I digest everything, 40K. Any of these books that I'm talking about right now, they are all fantastically narrated. And I'm going to get to the point of one of these books that I'll talk about further where the narration is Mm, so damn good and I suggest that you get it I have a link down in the description if you want to actually join up and get a free audible trial and try out one of these books any of them just pick one and you will absolutely enjoy it now I want to talk about one of my favorite book series in the last decade or more which I was hesitant about for particularly premise of this first book this is The Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. The reason why I was hesitant about it was because it was described as a Hunger Games style book. And yes, it does have a few themes that are very similar to that, and I'll get into that. But if you can get past that and get into the later books, you will be rewarded, and I will tell you why as well. So. This is set about 700, I don't know, probably about 900 years into the future. Because 700 years before the beginning of this story, there was a group on the moon who had begun to genetically manipulate our structure. And they had created something called the Iron Gold. These were humans that were genetically perfect in every single way. Their bones were denser. Their brains were more, they were more intelligent. Their eyesight was better. They were faster. They were stronger than normal human beings. And the people that were on the moon used this to conquer the earth. They would literally take their ships and drop the iron golds in basically what are dreadnoughts from orbit onto the planet. And they eliminated every single normal human. Any human that was left after this war was sterilized. So that way, after a generation, there was no more normal human beings left. And in their stead, instead of making everyone a gold, they changed everyone into different colors, as they call them. People that are genetically structured for their role in society. So you have at the very bottom reds. These are miners. These are factory line workers. They are smaller because they can fit into tighter spaces. And their culture is very similar to a working class Irish. They sing, they dance, they have music. It's a lot of that kind of stuff in there. It's the way they're portrayed, at least from our main character's perspective and his um, group, his clan that he's from. But then you have browns, maintenance workers, oranges, engineers, yellows, which are your scientists and doctors. You have pinks, which they are for 
two in the pink. That's all I'll say. You have silvers, which are your merchants. You have bronze, which are for working with bureaucracy. And you have gold sitting at the top, like being the guide of everything. And even in the golds, they are separated into two classes. Those that are peerless scarred and the families that are all peerless scarred because their genetic structure is even better and the pixies that are just the lower houses. Our story though starts from a red. His name is Darrow of Lycos. He is living in the mines and he is something called a hell diver, a driver of a giant drill that goes into the Martian soil to get precious helium-3. He doesn't see the world as being fair, but he just wants to live his life. His wife fridges herself, and he is inducted into a terrorist organization that wants to flip the pyramid of the society upside down, putting reds on top, and they are called the Sons of Ares. They do some things to him which allow him to become like a gold, so that way he can participate in the Institute and they can put place him at the top of the structure and try to rot the golds from within. They want him in a top military position so that way when the time comes, he can turn his fleets on the society itself. Now, this is where the Hunger Games perspective comes in, but I would say it's more of a Roman Hunger Games. This is like the Iliad was placed right into the Hunger Games because they are all separated into houses and the house that wins is the one that will become Peerless Scar. And the one at the very top of that house is then the Primus of the Institute. But there are proctors that watch over the school essentially. They live up on Mount Olympus. They have names like Apollo and um, Ares and they all fit into these different Greek god structure. And when there is a battle or a fight that is happening down in the Institute, they will fly down from Mount Olympus and will watch over the battle. And sometimes if, especially ones like Apollo are just there and watching things happening, they might call down a table with grapes and wine. If you have ever read the Iliad, this is exactly what happens at Troy. Apollo is just sitting above and watching the battle below and maybe just giving a boon or two to whoever he feels like is he wants to give favor to. So that is the first book. And I am just saying, just get through it. That part alone, I the like kind of mix in with the Iliad makes it very interesting, but you still have the characterization of the, te- the people that are there, like Darrow, Cassius and others and Mustang. But get through it. Get through to the other books because you will be dropped into a political theater like Dune. Multiple houses fighting one another, an insurrection that is coming up and threatening to divide the society entirely based on their colors. You have, again, like I said, those those star shells, you have that happening. And I want to say it because I read it on Audible, but Tim Gerald Reynolds is a phenomenal VA. He builds this crescendo of various different like things. He he gets you amped up, more and more amped up as a battle goes on until Darrow is just leaving, leaving with these cries of rage and anger. He becomes a red, furious, angry god. But the what's great about the entire story is as it goes on, you realize Darrow is not the good guy. There are no good guys. You can agree with the golds in the way that they're stru- they have structured society because it has kept peace for 700 years. And there are merits to how they actually implement everything that goes on. Yes, they are falling into decadence because societies will come up the stairs of civilization on hardened, clotted wooden shoes, but come down the stairs of civilization in fuzzy pink slippers, but there is merit to what they do. And Darrow himself becomes a bastard. But if you are a good bastard or a bad bastard, just depends on who wins. And the writing that Pierce Brown puts out gets you into that amped and believing in what Darrow does. And you want to follow him. 
You would follow him into the depths of hell with the way that he leads from the front. He will win at no cost. And what's great too with him is that you can tell he is a man that has absolutely nothing to live for. So he will throw himself with total abandon into every battle with only the determination to win. His life to him is meaningless, but he fights nonetheless. And it comes so, so incredibly, comes off so incredibly well. But I highly suggest it. Please read it. There is a TV show that is apparently in the works. I am hoping that Apple picks it up because they have been really good with high production value uh, shows. Please, please don't let it be Netflix. Please just don't let it be. But yeah, that is Red Rising. The next book I want to talk about is Recursion by Blake Crouch. He kind of writes in a very similar style to what Michael Crichton did back in the 80s with Jurassic Park and Westworld, which was a film, but his style is very similar where it's taking scientific ideas of the time and kind of expounding it into more advanced places. So we have superimposition of quantum structures with a previous book that he had written. And in this one, it is the idea of consciousness and of time travel, being able to relive moments. And this kind of fits into a theme of time travel that I normally don't see in Western media as much, except for in Groundhog Day, but you'll see it a lot in Japanese media. So you have things like Steins Gate, you have Majora's Mask, all about being able to relive aspects of your own life. It's like your consciousness is being sent back to a particular point in time and you are able to consciously make changes. You remember everything, but the world around you is exactly as it was. And it is just a kind of multi-world idea of time travel where you just, you go back and now you've created a new timeline, a new time. So this is one of the few in Western media that I've seen, but I've always loved that idea because you get to the insanity that can happen by finding a moment in time that you so desperately want to change. Your wife has been in a car accident and she is dying and you will jump to every single instance that you can to try and save her. But every time that you save her, every time you change something, she just dies again and again and again and again and again. And you might have lived for thousands of years within your own mind trying to repeat that moment and just save her. That is the kind of story that Recursion is telling. It is not that in particular, but it is telling that kind of perspective. And there are more haunting moments than just that that are in this book. There are moments of pure grim horror of people remembering things, remembering time. It is fantastic. I'm going to leave that to you and this, leave that book at where it is. Do try and read his other books as well. Dark Matter is a fantastic book as well. And his recent one called Upgrade, I'm iffy on. It's not my favorite of the three that he has written, but I would suggest it anyway. And is very interesting nonetheless. The last book that I want to talk about is Three Body Problem by Xi Xian Liu. This is a English translation of his book, but it offers you a scale of cosmic horror that I don't think I've seen in very many other properties. This is cosmic horror on the idea that we fundamentally do not understand our universe. And the fact that there are potentially other beings out there that understand it more than us and are aggressive and will try and put us down for it. In this story, there are scientists throughout the world, top scientists working at CERN and the Large Hadron Collider, as well as other projects that are mysteriously committing suicide. And there is a group that seems to be perpetrating this, that seem to be anti-human in some way. So you have a conspiracy that is underlying everything that is happening within the story, as well as a mystery of things that we believe are changing, are unchangeable, 
fundamental facts, like the background radiation of the universe, it flickers. Why would something that is impossible happen? How could it happen? And it follows a character as he goes along with it. In the background of this story, though, is the Chinese Revolution, cultural revolution in particular. This happened in the 1960s when Mao himself, when he was coming into power, used the youth to try and change the culture of China and get it away from Western idealism. This led to riots by students who thought that their professors who were talking about Western science, things like the fundamental physical nature of our universe, like Einstein's E equals MC square, were fundamentally false because they were Western propaganda. And this led to violence and a destruction of knowledge from, a, from those people. It is a great way of actually looking into the history of what happened here. And yes, it actually did come from China itself. Although the English translation starts with the Chinese revolution, the Chinese cultural revolution. So you get that perspective right off the bat, but it all boils down to our inability to move forward with our knowledge and accept it and how our culture holds us back at the same time. This book, A Remembrance of Earth Past, is the trilogy that comes from the three-body problem. And this goes deeper and deeper and deeper down the cosmic horror aspect of it, where it is not just on Earth where you can fundamentally feel like the forces of nature are against you, but it goes much harder. It is the universe is fundamentally shifted from life itself. Highly, highly recommend. There, this actually has a TV show coming out on it, I believe in the next year or so. Unfortunately, it is by D&D, the same people who did uh, Game, Game of Thrones. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, the book itself series, very good. Characterization, though, I will say in Three Body Problem in that entire series is not the greatest. Um, a lot of the characters are two dimensional, but we are talking about, you know, messing with the dimensions of reality. We are messing with like the quantum states of structures. It, there's a lot to it. I highly recommend it though. And those are the five books that I would really recommend that you read. They're fantastic. Like I said, though, read them on Audible. They all have very, very good narrators. The Red Rising Saga is a particular standout. The Adrian Tarkovsky's uh, books are also standouts as well. The VA for that, she does a fantastic job of getting the different tones, as well as getting Ivana Kern's very, very stern and angry scientist lady voice. It's very, very good. Um, if you liked it, please hit that subscribe button. We're going to be talking more about these kind of stories in the future, I hope. Um, but we do a lot with 40K and the relation to other things. Um, like talk about these books in the, in the comments. Um, otherwise, you can check out the five weapons that are in the Dark Tide game, as explained by my wife, who's sports medicine. Thank you. And that's it for today. Bye.